What's up YouTubers, Simon here, welcome to Hammer Talk, and today I'm chatting with a very special guest. Now she is a voice actress who's got a list that goes all the way up from the sky, right down to the bottom of, of the earth, who's played across from movies right into video games, and you might remember her from playing in Naruto, Sonic the Hedgehog the video games, Danny Phantom, Zatch Bell, Battle Be Demand, and across a whole range of others. Please welcome Colin Oshosny. Colin, how are you? I'm great, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. And uh, on to the first question. How, how did you get started in uh, acting? Oh, gosh. Um, in acting, I, I started when I was about 12. Um, my sister, um, a friend of mine actually, had come to her brownie troupe and, and sang to them. She had been in a production of Annie, and my sister decided she needed to do theater, and I was a super, super shy kid. and So she started doing theater, and I, was, and I played the clarinet. And so I played the, in the orchestra in one of her shows. I'm like, wait a minute, they're having way more fun than I am. So I auditioned for the next show, and I was hooked. I was Hava in Fiddler on the Roof, and that was it for me. I'm like, woo, I love this so much. So then I, I did theater all through high school, and I went to the University of Michigan for, for musical theater. And I always kind of just did voices, though, along the way. I would give voices to babies or animals, I'd look at their face and go, I know what they're saying, and I would just, I would just talk to them all the time. And I was doing it at the end of a class in college, and the teacher came running over to me and she said, was that you? And I'm like, ah, oh, I'm sorry, they just come out. She goes, no, you need to do voiceover. And I went, oh my gosh, that's what I love. I love cartoons, I love, you know, and I was singing, and I'm like, I could be the little mermaid, oh my god. So that was it for me, and I was like, that's what I have to do. So I did it! Yay! <laughs> That's fantastic. And yeah. can, do you remember like the first ever voice uh, that you ever did in uh, like a show that you ever did? Um, my very very first job was actually mm. a reporter Barbie book, where you one of those books that you push the button <laughs> and ah. it's um, it, it's you know says a phrase. I was Skipper, and it was it's fun to be a reporter. That was my very first paid voiceover job, but my very, very first show was the kids from Room 402, and I played, played Polly McShane, she collects spoons, um, she was crazy and ridiculous, and I love, love, loved her, that was my very, very first show, and my second show actually was Digimon, I played Sora on Digimon, That was and that was my first anime show, my first dubbing show. Fantastic. And just uh, getting into Digimon there, as you mentioned with that, what has it been like uh, working on the Digimon series? It was great, uh, except it was terrifying in the beginning because I had no idea what I was doing. I really was, I mean, talk about on-the-job training. I had no idea, because I, you know, I had done Kids from Room 402, but I had just started on that, and that's a very different process. You, you get your scripts ahead of time, and you record the voice first, and then they animate to your voice, whereas with anime dubbing, it's already done. So you have to look at the picture, and you have to match the flaps, the, the mouth movements, and you have to get all the emotion in there, but in time, and Japanese doesn't always translate to English, and so it's really, you know, it's a really, um, can be a tricky, tricky thing, especially when you don't know what you're doing at all, and especially with all the action and, um, you know, different reactions and things that you have to do in anime, it was, um, it was really hard at first, and I had to really play it off like I knew exactly what I was doing when I had no idea, so... Um, at first it was stressful, and then I and then I got better at it, and I was like, okay, I can do this, and it was uh, it was great. That's absolutely fantastic, and I can certainly relate to that sort of um, uh, kind of experience in that way in terms of the recordings and such. I mean, I'm certainly not a voice actor myself, but I am a musician after all, and uh -huh. yeah, it's been um, I certainly had a bit of a bad experience in that sort of sense where where you the people that you work with sometimes the sound engineers and the recorders they can be a little where they can sometimes be a bit impossible to work with. And sometimes if you don't have a lot of the information in front of you, it can be very hard to work in that sort of sense. Sure. So, just a bit of a crossing of the streams there. But apart from, uh, from playing Sora in the Digimon series, you also worked across, from, um, across a few other Digimon series as well, including Digi Digimon Data Squad and Digimon Fusion as well. Now, yeah. what has it been like working across those kinds of series? Because I heard that in the Digimon series, as starting from Digimon Adventure 
and going slightly higher, I think, when it got to Digimon Tamers, I think, it started to get a little bit darker in terms of the tone? A little bit, yeah, a little bit in, in Fusion. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, Data Squad. Well, I guess Fusion was a little bit too, just because the kids were, like, trapped there. And, um, and they came across some not-so-nice people. And the character I played, Angie, was not really part of it all and she really just wanted to go home it was almost like you know kind of being stuck in a nightmare so in that sense yeah it was much much darker um and they didn't feel like they were ever going to make it home so that's a little bit scary um you're absolutely right um you know I always kind of uh, for me every show is a little bit different and even though you're still in that Digimon world all three of them were very different shows so um and and kind of far apart so it was like there was like my Digimon stage which was the very beginning of my career and then Data Squad was sort of you know third of the way in and then Fusion came a little bit later so it was some you know they've kind of spaced out and um, as you go along in your career you kind of you know you get more comfortable you get certainly better at it Um, I'm like a pretty fast looper now I can I can get through a lot of lines in a small amount of time because I'm like, you know, let's just get it done. I can do one and done and um, I don't have to do a lot of takes. So in that sense, it's different too because I'm more experienced and I know much more what I'm doing. That's fantastic. But it makes me feel more confident, I guess. That's great. And with with playing across all those series, uh, especially when it started to get a little bit darker around that, did it kind of push you as like, as an actor, like challenge you in some way? And especially, like I said before, about how you have to fit your lines within a... It's much more um, restricting. You know, as an actor, you want to be able to, you know, get across your emotions um, and whatever it needs to be, you know, in the scene. And it can be difficult to convey some of those things in that short amount of time and with just your voice. So, So, yeah, it definitely can be much more challenging to, you know relay that that fear or worry or um, whatever those um, darker images are um, definitely brings up a challenge for sure. That's definitely true. And one of the other series um, that I actually remembered you playing, that was actually I think my first introduction to a lot of the well-known voice actors, was uh, Battle Beater Man in which you played Asado. What was it yeah. like uh, doing, uh, what was it like playing Battle Beater Man? That was really fun. That was um, I got to work with my my good friend Michael Storich, who is so funny. Um, I, it's so funny. I you know when people bring up different shows, like I can picture what studio I recorded them in. So right now I can see like the little lobby and where you had to step up to get into the booth. You know they're all they're all a little bit different, but they're all wonderful. I'm always feel so grateful for every job that I get, and um, I'm always interested. To you know where some of these stories go because some of the anime is just so you know when I first started doing them I I, I kind of didn't understand it because it wasn't something that I had experienced before I'd never watched it before I hadn't read any of the manga so I wasn't aware of the kind of subculture that existed you know before I started working on them so every time it was it just was a little foreign to me because every show is a little bit different and there's weird characters and they can do weird stuff stuff and they're in these strange situations and I'm like okay let's do it <laughs> um, plus the fact that you don't get the whole script so I don't always know what's happening in the rest of the episode <laughs> so that's always a little strange too that's yeah that can definitely happen sometimes uh, but yeah. I've always thought of Battle Beat Man as almost like um, almost like I think a version of uh, of Beyblade set in West in the Western times which which I actually thought was fantastic and it would yeah. be pretty cool to actually pull off in a live action scenario. It was. Uh, yeah, good point. <laughs> Definitely. And one of the other roles that I remembered you, you playing was uh, Zatch Bell as Susie and Rob Nurse. What was it like <laughs> doing uh, Zatch Bell? That was so fun. I loved playing Susie. Um, again, I'm picturing the studio. Um, and I get to work with Jeff Nimoy, which is always a treat. I um, actually haven't gotten to work with him in a really long time, but it's nice to have him in the director's seat um I just loved playing Susie I loved her so much she was just fantastically dim 
Um, so that was a lot of fun. And another strange show, this weird kid in a gym bag. I don't, you know, it's, you know, some of them are just kind of a little bit strange to me, but, um, but still really, really fun. It's always really fun, especially when you get to start a new show. Cause it's like, oh, where's this one taking us? It was definitely a really fun show. In fact, uh, I actually got to meet uh, Jason Spizak when he was in Australia. I oh, think it was, cool. uh, I think it was a couple of years ago when he was in uh, for the Armageddon Expo there, and oh. I asked him whether because the show I think stopped halfway through, and it didn't continue on with the English dubs. Around then, I asked him, "Are we expecting like um, a further English dubbed uh, episodes in the series?" And he said, "I'm not entirely too sure." But if you ever got the chance to voice in Zatch Bell again, would you take the offer up? Absolutely. For sure, yeah. I kind of feel like, um, you know, I feel like these characters are sort of part of me because I dig deep for, you know, I don't know where they come, you know, where inside of me they come from, but I feel like every one of them is a little bit of a part of me. And so um, I would, you know, it would be very disappointing to not get to continue to play them if, you know, if that opportunity ever arose. So I absolutely would. People That's... ask me about the Digimon Try series too. They're dying to know if it's coming, and we don't get that information until you know we're like the last ones to know. So, but absolutely, I'd play Sora again too. For That's... sure. That's fantastic. And yeah. one of your most, one of the most famous roles that you're also really well known for is the Naruto series, as Eno and Konohamaru, as and also various characters as well. What has it been like uh, playing in the Naruto universe? I am always, uh, I, every t you know, my characters kind of come and go, like they'll be in spits and starts and there'll be a long period of time where they won't show up. Um, and I, just a couple weeks ago, I worked on episode 600. I'm always amazed at how far this series has gone and how long we've been working on it, which is, you know, awesome and crazy at the same time. Um, that's, it's been, a, it's been really, really fun. And I'm really, really glad that, you know, has sort of, um, her character has evolved a lot and become, you know, more part of the group, whereas she, you know, being with Shikamaru and, and Choji in the beginning, I, I you know, I got a, a very different reaction from fans in the beginning. People weren't so crazy about her <laughs> because they liked Naruto's team and they didn't like her team, and so it's kind of nice when people actually like her because she's, you know, gotten to be more part of the team. Um, and I love Konohamaru. I think he's a blast. That's absolutely fantastic. That's fantastic. And yeah. when you first uh, got into doing uh, Naruto, how did you have to prepare for, like, for the roles or for the show in general? Like, uh, did you um, like watch? Because it's basically I thought of it as like a, you know ninja, like a ninja style show with supernatural elements to it. Like, watch any uh, ninja movies or anything like that. You know, I I didn't. I probably should have. That would have been uh, that would have been good. But you know, we have really good directors, and I. I don't know what it is, you know, you kind of just have to go for it. It's like being in acting class where they say, you know, you never, ha you never um, want to, you know, half-heartedly do it. You, you know, so you go, go all out or don't do it, you know. So I think you just, you just trust yourself and you just go for it. And if, that, I think that's part of what was part of my fear in the beginning with uh, Digimon was that I wasn't confident, so I didn't know if I was doing it right and I would, I would go for it, but then I was like, oh, geez, are they going to laugh at me? Are they going to say, oh, that was terrible? So by the time I was working on Naruto, um, I was much more confident with this. And I and video games in between, which that helps as well, because a lot of the action stuff, like Sora didn't have as much of the action stuff, certainly, as as my Naruto characters do, and especially Konohamaru. So, and Eno, too, I guess. Um but doing video games, that helps a lot because yep. it helps you kind of figure out how to do those, um, like, fighting-type scenes, you know, all the, all the um, reactions and actions and, you know. And even in my um, original animation series, sometimes you have to do a whole library of stuff where you're laughing or you're coughing or you're, you know, and video games, again, you, you have to have, like, you have to be able to die in <laughs> many different ways. <laughs> So it helps you with with your anime for sure because you have to learn how to do those fight scenes and make it sound like this is what it sounds getting like getting punched to the gut. This is what it sounds like getting punched in the face. This is what it sounds like 
giving that punch to somebody else. Um, so that's how, that's kind of how I, I think it was my other jobs that helped me along the way. It was sort of like this path that took me there. That's fantastic. That that's fantastic. And speaking yeah. about, of course, with the, the video, video game side of things, you're best known in the Sonic the Hedgehog video games as Tails and Charmy Bee, but you also had the chance to play Tails in the Sonic Boom series as well. What has it been like being part of the Sonic the Hedgehog universe? Oh, it's been fantastic. I feel so lucky. We have a blast. Um, I, of course, prefer the shows just because when you do the video games, you're all by yourself, and I have so much fun working with the cast. They're amazing. The writers are awesome. The scripts are hilarious. We just, we just it's like playtime. It's so much fun. I'm so lucky. Um, but no, it's been, it's really been great. They sent us to New York for this fan event. Um, all of, gosh, I guess it was two, oh, 2014. Wow, it seems like it was just last year. Um, and we had so much fun. And the fans of Sonic are just, I mean, they are the greatest fans. They're just so lovely. And they draw pictures for you. And it's just so nice. It's really, it's really been wonderful to be part of that cast. That's absolutely amazing, and it's still going incredibly strong uh, with the series and everything. And I ho hope it continues on for a very, very long time. I hope so too. <laughs> and one of the other roles that I remembered you playing in the most was uh, you also played Jazz Fenton in the Danny Phantom series. What has it yeah. been like uh, being part of like uh, the Nickelodeon series as well, especially with a show that was in the tone of like, uh, like with the Fairly Odd Parents and such, but with ghosts, really. That was such a fun show, and again, another amazing, hilarious cast. Of, I mean, just these people are so ridiculously talented. I'm so lucky to be in the room with them, and they're, you know, the things that they can do are just, uh, it's amazing. Um, and to work at Nickelodeon is a blast. Butch Hartman is fantastic. He's such a great writer. He's so creative, and he's just a lovely, lovely person. And he's from Michigan, so how bad can you be? And so is Rob Paulson. We were like this Michigan crew, um, but all the all the people on that um, in the cast were just wonderful, and we just kind of clicked. It was one of those things where we just all kind of, you know, it was just a really good fit for all of us. And the Nickelodeon building is a blast. It's like all these bright bright colors and silly chairs and um, snacks. <laughs> it was a really good snack. <laughs> Fantastic. Fun to work at Nickelodeon, I tell you. Everybody's in a good mood. It's really nice. That's fantastic. And yeah. with the scenes uh, where you've had, uh, like, Rob Paulson's character and your character interacting together and such, and especially with where... What has it been like uh, having, like, working together alongside, uh, in particular with all the cast members, but particularly Rob Paulson, when you and, you and his characters, your character and his character, had scenes together? Um... He was he was great. I mean, he's um, you know it's he's he's so he's so popular and he's so well known. But he's such a regular guy and he's so lovely. He's such a dear dear person. So he never made it so that you know me being more of a newbie. Um, he never made me feel intimidated or you know uncomfortable at all. He was just you know we're just doing the scene together and. There's my, that's my TV dad, and it was great. You know, you all stand in front of your microphone, and you do your thing, and everybody's, you know, professional in a very silly way. <laughs> he was great. <laughs> he was really, really wonderful to work with. That's fantastic. And, of course, with one of the other shows that uh, I'm also your best known for, you also made it into the Marvel Universe with Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. What? <laughs> What, Very lucky. What what was it been what has it been like being part of the Marvel universe? Amazing. And those sessions were fantastic. I was like being invited to the boys club because it was like <laughs> all these guys and me. Every once in a while they let another girl in the booth, but it was for the most part it was me and all these amazing guys and I got to work with um just so many, so many fantastic, fantastic people. Fred Tanisher is just amazing and um I, I just, oh, it was it was such a great experience it really really was we were so disappointed when they, when they stopped recording those ones to you know change up the universe and go more towards the movies that was a little bit of a bummer but but i loved her she was fantastic so much fun and so so much chutzpah and spunk and 
it's really fun to play superhero. That's absolutely fantastic. And you're absolutely right. That show was definitely one of the best. And it had such a huge cast of characters in that sense. Mm -hmm. And were you familiar with uh, like Marvel Comics before you started working on the show? Or did you like like know about it while you were during... Or start to know about it during the show and such? I, you know, I I was not a comic book reader. I was familiar with all of the ones, the more mainstream ones, of course. Um, but as far as Ant-Man and Wasp, it was that was my very first, you know, foray into knowing who they were and under, you know, and you know, my first introduction to them. Um, Wally Wingert was a really good resource because he is a comic book reader and uh, and has been for a long time. So he. Um, <laughs> he was like my my mentor. Like I was like, okay, what's going on? And he, he would tell me about their relationship and where it was going and where they had been, and um, so that was actually really really helpful. That's absolutely. Phil Lamar is a big comic book guy too. He would bring his comic books into the session. So like when he wasn't uh, up at the microphone, he'd be sitting there reading his comic book. Lots of comic book geeks out there. <laughs> Love it. Well, okay. well, with Wally Wingard uh, being part of uh, not just in the Avengers series, but also part of the Batman Arkham games, playing the Riddler, and Phil Lamar being part of uh, the Justice League animated series as Green Lantern, it's yeah. um, that's pretty amazing. In it that is. Sort of sense. I've I've been so lucky. I've worked with so many amazing people. It's um, it's, you know, it's really it's really cool. Super lucky. That's absolutely fantastic. And with all the roles that you've uh, that you've done over the years, what has been like the one role that's like resonated with you the most, and you feel like you could relate to as as a person? I think I try to relate to all of them um, because I feel like all of them are a little piece of me. Um, but I, my the one that is like nearest and dearest to my heart, I think is um, is Polly. She was she was my very first, <laughs> and I just. I just, there's something about her. She's just, you know, clueless, but really smart and silly and goofy and didn't really care what other people thought and just, you know, ridiculously out there. She's my favorite. <laughs> That's fantastic. And uh, any, uh, without getting into any spoilers, like any upcoming uh, projects for you or any current projects happening this year or will occur in the future for you? They are coming. I, I have actually, I've got two new shows that I really wish I could talk about because um, they're going to be awesome. And then I have this project that's almost done that they say they may be announcing at Comic-Con this year, but they weren't sure. I, I did a little bit of polishing work a couple weeks ago, and I asked if I could tweet about it, and they said, not yet. So I have to wait. But it's going to be awesome because I finally got to see a picture and it's, oh, I'm so excited, but I can't say anything. But as soon as I can, I promise, I will I will let everybody know. I'll scream it from the rooftops. Um, but keep watching Sonic. And um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Glitter Force, but that is on Netflix. Um, and, um, yeah, Glitter Force. I've, I've actually never heard of that series before, but I'll be sure to check it out, though. That oh, sounds it's awesome. Cool. It's really, really fun. It's really fun. If the Get past the first couple episodes because it gets better and better and better. Um, it's really, I don't know, I think it's super cute. It's probably for a, a maybe younger audience than you per se, but maybe you have some people that are listening that have girls that love super girls. And it's, it's, um, it's really, really sweet. It's sort of a it's Sailor Moon-esque, but, but I think funnier, more fun <laughs> in my opinion. Well, I'm I'm one of those people that's really open to any kind of kind of anime, really. So I, so in that sort of sense, yeah. And final question: What yep. advice would you have uh, to anyone who wants to make it in the business? I always say, you know, go for it. Um, don't let anybody tell you no. Do take do hear their advice though. Um, hear what they have to say. Um, be honest with yourself. Take acting classes. Take improv, um, and uh, practice, practice, practice. That's absolutely fantastic. That's really great advice. Colleen Shazney, thank you so much for this. It's been an absolute honor to talk to you. Oh, 
thank you. It's been great. Thanks for having me on. That's no problem at all. And anyway, for the uh, fans to uh, like know about like uh, any of your projects coming up through Facebook, Twitter, and the official website. Yes, I'm, I'm. I'm working on my website. It's in process, but um, you can find me on Facebook, Colleen O'Shaughnessy, voice actor. Um, I have a fan page. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Vo Colleen. And I'm also on, they strong-armed me onto Instagram just this past weekend, so I'm on Instagram too, just Colleen O'Shaughnessy on Instagram. That's absolutely oh. fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much, Colleen, and hope, to see you. Aust- and hope to see you in Australia one day. I do too. We're working on it. My, my guy said he's going to try and get me to, um, what's the, is it, um... Uh, several conventions that we've got in Australia. Supernova. Yes, Supernova. 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 That's, Supernova. that's the biggest one there. But okay. But we've also got the uh, Oz Comic Con, and we've also got uh, AMC Expo as well. But there's also the Madman Anime Festival that's coming out in September as well, which I think they just started up, I think. Okay. So that's well, definitely that's my definitely guy to check is out. pretty good. He knows, you know, where they all are. And Australia has always, I've always wanted to go to Australia. I got to go to New Zealand last year, which was amazing. I did Armageddon last year. That's um, absolutely fantastic. But, you know... Australia's on the bucket list, so I'm coming your way some sometime. That's absolutely sure. fantastic. Thank you so much, Colleen. And Thank as you, you. said, that's okay. Well, guys, if you'd like to find out more about Colleen O'Shaughnessy's work, you can check her out on both Facebook and Twitter, with links down below in the description. And don't forget to subscribe down below to Hammer Talk. Follow me on both Facebook and Twitter, as well as subscribe to my music channel under Simon Hammer Music. Thank you guys so much for listening. This is Simon, signing off. Bye.